I'm going to show you backup to cloud options that we're going to introduce in uh, version 10.03. Uh, but before going into the demo itself, let me give you a little bit more of context and background on it, because there is a couple of options available. First of all, there is native integration, which is used in a way that data protector media agents act as a cloud gateway, and they can stream data to various, uh, various cloud offerings. So that would be a data flow that goes directly from your server into the cloud. Next option is using cloud gateway systems. Um, these gateways are usually offered by certain cloud vendors like Microsoft and Amazon, and depending on which of the two you're using, um, you have different uh, emulations going on and backup flows by those gateways. Uh, main advantage here is that those gateways can optimize data and uh, multi-stream and buffer, so um, it gives you a slightly better performance and some other configuration options. A third option is using backup appliances where your backup device like store once or data domain uh, become a cloud gateway on their own and you back up to those devices and then through certain mechanisms data is uploaded in the cloud. So your backup device will be kind of extended into cloud storage and becomes larger and also organizes everything you want to kind of offload to the cloud. Anyway, in this demo we want to concentrate on new items that came in for native integrations and that's for Amazon S3, Ceph and Skelety. All of them support uh, S3 as a protocol so everybody that is compatible to that protocol is supported in, in this release. So let's move over to the demo system to show you some of the details on how to use it. So from a data protector point of view, uh, we're using those cloud devices as any other backup device. So we make it look like it is like a tape drive or a tape library to make it easier for administrators and operators to work with it. And the way a cloud backup device is created is just like from the devices tab. So you just right click to add a new device and whatever kind of name you want to give here, you just do that in the, in the upper field device name. And from a device type, you pick uh, backup to disk because ultimately this is backup that um, kind of sits on some disk devices somewhere. A new option that is um, introduced in the Data Protector 1003 is this uh, new cloud version, Amazon S3 API compatible target. And if you select that, it will automatically uh, pre-populate uh, what's going on in terms of S3, uh, especially for Amazon. And the next page will actually get you to the default settings that you need for an AWS cloud integration. So um, you have S3 regions to choose from here. So these are the regions that are uh, hosted worldwide on uh, kind of an Amazon kind of on-premise system. And you may want to choose any of those. And you give it access key and secret key IDs, which you usually get from uh, the cloud vendor itself. So that's something you type in here. This is the access key first, then it is the secret key. And don't forget to pick the right uh, gateway system that has connection to the outside world. So it has a proxy configured or it is directly connected to the internet. Otherwise, uh, scanning for a bucket would not work. Anyway, if you hit select or create bucket, it will go on and, and check on this particular S3 region, which kind of buckets are available. And it also lets you create a new bucket if you want. So this would be the overview of those buckets available for you. If you click create a new bucket, then down here you can give it your own bucket name. So we're, we're keeping the default settings over here because the, the approach is more or less the same for all the other cloud systems as well. Even if you go to Ceph and Skelety here, the only thing that is changing is that you now have to type in uh, the URL manually. This can be whatever kind of system that is local uh, to your configuration, or uh, it is also hosted in the cloud somewhere. It just has to be reachable by URL. You provide access key, secret key, the same kind of way, and then you select or you create a bucket on those systems. Now, once you're done with that, your device configuration may look like this. So this is my Amazon S3 backup device. 
and uh, here's the bucket I created for it. So thanks to the intelligent gateway setup that Data Protector has, I can have multiple gateways uh, streaming data to this particular bucket or this particular cloud integration. Those gateway systems can be on different uh, operating systems and each of those gateways can actually stream uh, uh, five streams usually. So this is a setting uh, that you can influence, of course. Anyway, this would be for Amazon. Um, for Skelety is kind of the same. So you have your bucket configuration. You have one or more gateways going on. And for Azure, the only thing that is different is that instead of a bucket, they uh, talk about containers, which is a blob storage, so binary large object storage. Uh, just kind of a different name for the same kind of approach. Now, if you've set up a backup, then it would look like exactly the same as with um, other backups you do. So let's take a file system backup over here. You pick whatever files you want to back up here. And on the next screen, you will have an overview of all your devices. So here is your, your Amazon backup device with all the gateways. Here is your Azure configuration and here is your Skelety configuration. Anyway, you could actually pick individual gateways here. So if you want to redirect your data flow through a dedicated system, you just click that particular system. But you can also, of course, click the whole uh, gateway configuration. Then all those systems can be used during the backup I.O. procedure. Uh, which also means if one of the gateways fails to do something, the other ones will take over. Okay, you could also click the other cloud integrations as well. Um, if you do it this way, then you actually have failover in between those clouds. So if one cloud is not available, Data Protector will just move on and use another cloud or another bucket. So depending on what you have configured. So this would be the, the main items that are new in terms of cloud backup. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.